the Planning and Zoning Committee meetings of Post Falls and then also the City Council meetings. Um, I do also homeschool my children, so I'm not as involved in public school, but I do obviously believe that it's important enough to not send my children to them currently. So um, what I'd like to ask about is the term controlled growth is advocated for um, a lot in our city council meetings currently, and our current council members say that they believe in it, but personally, I don't see that it's really been upheld. What does controlled growth mean to the three of you, and what ways would we see that implemented differently than we do today? Josh, let's start with you this time. I think more better term would be responsible growth. Control kind of sounded more government getting too involved. But I think more so responsible growth, I see that more as a lot of this, this rezoning like Nathan talked about, um, we've got to slow that down. We can't, we have to have more single family homes. Um, and then if we are going towards multifamily or high density, again, getting that in where I can follow what Nathan said, more access to the people living in there to, to reduce the traffic and stuff like that. But I think more so if we can focus on the single family, get away from the high density, I think that's going to be, you know, the way forward. And, and, and also hand in hand with, with the current infrastructure of the town because the traffic is absolutely insane. So I think the growth with, you know, building up the infrastructure with it, not just you know, as developments go in now, um, the developers are responsible for any roads that have left the development, um, and the city seems to think that's fine, but it doesn't doesn't help all the existing roads out there that are just clogged up um, all day long. So, so Ken, oh, sorry. give a couple. Yeah, of, yeah, yeah. Kenny, you want you want to go ahead and take a shot at that? Yeah, I'll kind of start out the way he did as well. I don't like using the term control growth necessarily, I, I think the responsible growth management is kind of the term that I put on it. Um, we are around 39,000 people in Post Falls right now, and it's projected we'll be at 105,000 in 20 years, and you guys can decide are we able to handle that right now with the infrastructure we have, and I, I say absolutely not. So we have to have some sort of way that we're going to manage that. And one of the things we look at with growth is, is it the growth we hate or is it what growth brings? And I think it's what growth brings. So if we're gonna grow to 100,000 or even grow to 60 or 80,000, I want to see us plan well for that so that we're not having the issues that growth brings. If it's the crime that people care about, which is the traffic, let's work on those things and plan that well and not just rubber stamp every apartment and building project that comes in. Thank you. To me, control of growth really has a lot to do with the commitment that we make as city leaders to the residents that surround these developed areas. You know, I bring up again the thing with Fieldstone. Um, you know, when people bought in as residents of Fieldstone, it was a, it was a commitment that I feel the city made to them that the, the areas around them that would be built up were to be similar to what they bought into, and so it affects their decision making. And for most people, the biggest single investment that you have is your house. So it's one of the biggest decisions that you make. And so when you are making a decision about where you're gonna live, um, it's, a, it's, it's your biggest decision. And so if it's based on what your city leaders have committed to you will, will come in around you later, um, and then that commitment is broken, I don't think that's right. You know, it frustrates me to, to, to know that that happened here in, in Post Falls. You know, another example of that is is down on Ponderosa Ave or Ponderosa Boulevard, um, east of Greensbury. There was a change of, of zoning yeah. there uh, that all the that all the neighbors were were irate about because it changes their community that directly. It affects them. So things like that, I think, are well within our control as city leaders. Um, you know, I guess I've, I've been asked this question a lot because I think growth is on on all of our minds. Um, and so to give an example of you know, good growth versus bad growth, I would say you know, bad growth to me um, is Crown Point. Um, for, you know, and I apologize if anybody lived out there. because you know, It's a beautiful community, it just didn't make sense when they did it. I don't know how many units are out there, and I know they have a park, um, but you know, McGuire wasn't developed at that time. 
uh, where that roundabout is now. Um, if you try to get on to, to uh, Prairie Avenue on Spokane Street, that's a death trap right there. I avoid that intersection at all costs. And I know the future plan is to make that kind of sway to the west and put a roundabout there to access that. But, you know, here we are. How long has Crown Point been, Crown Point been built out? Ten, ten years? And we're still trying to react to it, you know? Um, so, to me, control growth maybe isn't the best word, but maybe... Um, you know, as a, as a city leader, I believe it's our job to try to look forward and say, okay, we're putting this development in here. It's not only gonna affect Prairie and McGuire, it's gonna affect Spokane Street and all the other areas, similar to the Pleasant View annexation that just happened, you know. It's not gonna just affect Pleasant View. People find the path of least resistance when it comes to traffic, so every side road is gonna be busier because of that development out there. And, you know, I think those are the kinds of things that we need to really consider not just the scope of, like, of how we think people are going to behave uh, when you have 500 units going in on, on that property. So, does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. Thank you. And you have a follow up? May I? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Okay. So, I've talked to the city attorney more times than he really appreciates, I think, um, <laughs> in those meetings. And I've asked him why it is that we keep um, approving high density housing and larger growth and why these keep coming to council and why they never vote no. Um, and he brought up land rights in Idaho are like we have a lot of, um, I don't know, he said we have strong land rights, which I just interpret to mean that we have a lot of individual rights to do with our land what we would like. So that seems to make sense when someone owns a piece of property and they'd like to annex it into the city and make it high density housing. Um, and then he also brought up some sort of national fair housing like legislature, um, I think it has a special name that I can't remember right now, but essentially saying you have to have so many different types of housing available in your community for it to be legal. Um, currently, you guys probably already know this because you're there, but they track the different types of housing that we have by acreage, right? So we have like 48% or something of R1, and then they count it as like 1% of high density housing because they're just going by land use. They're not going by units. So I guess I have kind of a two-part question. Um, do you feel like that's the most appropriate way to look at the way that we're growing in Post Falls by acreage as, as opposed to units or people living in those types of houses? And then also, would you be willing to stand up and, and vote these things down that come from the city staff? Because what I've seen over the past year is that no council member, even after asking questions that make it seem like they don't agree with whatever is being brought to them, have voted no. Excellent questions. Yeah. Who wants to start with that one? Sorry. I'll start with that one. Uh, you know, Great job. It, it's, it's just an excellent question to ask about planning and zoning. What, what's unfortunate to me about what I've seen in planning and zoning yeah. is that um, I think there's a lack of curiosity or due diligence from council members when they get a proposal placed in front of them from planning and zoning. Um, so they really entrust a lot of their decision-making powers to the, either the engineer or the attorneys and say, well, you know, this is what is well within there, it's well within the boundaries, is it, you know. And I think that all that is fine and good because you need to trust the people that you're working with um, within the government system. But there have been occasions where um, I think the council member themselves need to go down and walk the neighborhood and talk to the neighbors and, and be aware of how this is gonna affect people. Um, so I don't like that what it seems like to this point is that it's kind of a rubber stamp process. Um, I think there just needs to be more investigation into, into you know, not just legality, but practicality. How is this going to impact our community? And I can answer the, the question uh, definitely yes, I will vote no on impacts against our, our our neighboring communities that I feel is inappropriate for that community. And again, it's not that I'm against high density housing, I just think it has to be done in a, in a way that is um, conducive to kind of inner urban growth while respecting the, the kind of out, outlying residential areas. Um, does that answer your question? Josh or Kennedy, you want to add anything? Uh, just the Nathan did it, there needs to be more community involvement um, when there is a request for zone change and that kind of stuff. I think there needs to be a lot 
of more of the community stepping up and asking questions and, and giving their input and their ideas. And again, I'd, I'd be a no vote too. Um, I think there's way too much rubber stamping going on in there. So. I'll just add real quickly, I agree with what was said. I would definitely stand up and say no to some of these that are coming in. Uh, one of the things that makes it difficult is we've got the side of the people and what they want specifically, the homeowners there, but then also what's best for the city. We have to balance both of those as council members. Um, a couple months ago, there was a dog park that, <clears throat> that they wanted to put in, and I went to the meeting, and basically the city said, we've already approved this dog park, we're just letting you know what's coming in. And all the residents there came out and said, we don't even want this dog park here. And our children play here, and the dog owners came out and said, we have dogs, we don't want this dog park. But the city had decided they were going to put this dog park in. We need more of the interaction with the community. And it's hard to get the community to come out, so we need to go to the community. And so I agree, we need to go walk to those neighborhoods and say, you know, how does this impact you guys? Is it good for you individually? And then balance that with what's good.